Hello, it's X-Ray Bob here, wearing perhaps the world's nerdiest t-shirt, to go along with today's lecture, which is uh, examples of how to do cooling curve problems. You'll have two types of cooling curve problems. One are anode cooling curves, the other are housing cooling curves. The plots will look identical, um, they'll often come at you in pairs, and they want to just make sure that you can identify which graph to use. Um, here's one right now. It tells us it's an anode cooling curve. What it shows on the Y scale is the heat units, meaning how many heat units you can uh, draw on or generate before the uh, anode is getting too hot. And when the anode gets too hot, it, you need to give it some time to cool off. So if I gave the anode, if I did a technique that used 350,000 heat units, that would drive the anode if it started completely cold all the way up to its maximum and then I would have to wait till it cools off before I use it again. Okay, and you'll see um, we'll do some series of exposures and talk about how long you have to wait for it to cool off. So one of the types of problems you're going to be faced with is what is the maximum heat? They'll say what is the maximum number of heat units that the anode can absorb and these are nice and easy because all you need to do for this is read off the top number, meaning uh, in this problem it would show us 350,000 heat units uh, because that is the maximum and then we might have to wait you know, five or six or eight or ten minutes before the next exposure for it to cool down. If we shot it past that maximum it would overheat. So here you would just find wh where it is across zero, 350,000, that's your answer. A companion question that might go with it would be how long does it take the tube to cool down completely from that maximum heat as determined in the previous question. So to do that you'd say well if I used 350,000 heat units they want me to cool down completely. Cooling down completely means getting all the way back to zero. It's going to take me from here to here so it looks like from zero minutes to 15 minutes. It looks like it's going to take me 15 minutes to cool down. Every, it shows every minute it cools, it cools another minute, it cools another minute, it cools another minute. It takes 15 minutes for it to get all the way back down to completely cool. Here, why don't you pause the recording and try this one. How'd that go for you? Um, so here we've got what's the maximum heat units. Hopefully you went to your y-axis and said 105,000 heat units. These are always in thousands of units. The graph will tell you, it'll explain its units. And how long would that take to completely cool down? Again, you'd say, all right, I'm at 105,000, and it takes seven and a half minutes all the way to cool to get completely cool. So really, these problems, you're just reading off the y-axis. You're reading off the, the, the x-intercept and the y-intercepts, where it is across zero. All right, here's another one with a lot more clutter. Actually, most of these lines you don't need for this problem. We mainly see this cooling curve here. It's asking what's the maximum number of heat that the anode can absorb. I see anode up here. I see my cooling curve. I ignore all these other lines, extraneous information, distractors, and we would see 300,000 is what it can absorb. And how long would it take to cool off? Eight minutes. It'll go zinc in eight minutes. Eight minutes will be completely cooled off. All right, oh, here's another one. It says, what is the maximum number of heat units the housing can absorb? The trick here is they've given us an anode cooling chart and a housing cooling chart, and they want to see us demonstrate that we can pick the right chart. So there's the word housing, there's the word housing, I'm in business. And now I would just read off here, what's this, 1,200 thousands, so 1,250,000 heat units. And how long would it take to cool off completely? And we see here 400, it looks like 450 minutes out here. All right, here's another type. So those are the ones that ask the maximum. They can ask you, hey, if an anode absorbs 100,000 heat units, how long will it take to cool completely? And so you would find that 100,000 heat units, would and we can assume it's starting, well, it doesn't matter. If it's got 100,000 heat units on it, how long does it take to cool? We don't, it might have started here with uh, 50,000 on it, and we did a, a, an exposure that drove it up. So we find the 100,000, we see that's at like time four, 
to cool completely would be the time 14. So 14 minutes minus 4 minutes is 10 minutes to cool completely from this point. Earlier we were doing how long to cool completely from the maximum, but in this problem they said from this point, how long would it take to cool completely? Why don't you try this one? How'd that go for you? All right, first we'll find our 75,000 heat units. We'll say, hmm, that looks like it's about a minute and a half. And they want us to do what? To cool completely, meaning going all the way out to seven and a half minutes. And so that time to cool would be six minutes. All right, type three are the trickiest yet. Type one, we said, show me the extreme max heat unit. Show me the extreme time to cool. Work problems two, we said here, I gave you a heat unit so we could have fallen at a different time and we wait to cool completely. Here we're gonna have some more tricks. So here, if an anode absorbs 180,000 heat units, how long do you have to wait before it can absorb another 180,000 heat units? So here, we'll do that first 180,000, that brings us here, and then we'll say, hmm, can I do another 180,000? If I didn't wait at all and I tried another 180,000, it would overheat, it would go to 360,000, and the max is 300,000. So it won't let me run that technique. So I have to cool off first. And the question is, how long do I have to wait? And there's a lot of ways to do this. This is the way I, I like to do it. Um, I'm going to figure out how long can I wait to safely absorb 180,000. And this blue bar I have is like a, a ruler of 180,000. So I'll take the maximum value, 300,000, and subtract off that 180,000. And that brings me down to 120,000. So what this tells me is I have to wait to cool off at, from this point here, two minutes, at least till the cooling curve brings me to this point, 120,000. Because once I'm cool enough, once I've cooled down to 120,000, then I have the capacity to absorb another 180,000 without overheating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate this time difference to get from 180,000 to cool down that 60,000 units. So now I'm at 120,000. Now I can absorb another 180,000. So I got time two and time three and a half. So I'd have to wait about a minute and a half. That's how you do those. So it's, it's again, we're not waiting to cool completely, which would be out here at eight minutes. We didn't use, we didn't give you the maximum load. That would have been 300,000. We gave you two shots that exceeded the maximum. So the first shot you took was here, then you had to wait to cool down until you were at least cool enough to have enough headroom to take that second shot of 180,000 without overheating. All right, so here's another example of that. If the housing, oh, housing up here, housing over here, I'm safe, Whew. okay. If the housing absorbs 800K heat units, how long will it be before another 800 Kilo heat units, 800,000 heat units can be absorbed. Again, I would find my 800K. Uh, I would say, do I have room for another 800K? No, that would take me to a million six. I can only go to a million 250,000. So I do have to wait to cool off. How long do I have to wait? Hmm, all right, I got 800K and I got that maximum value. I'll subtract 800K from that maximum value to see that I'll have to get to at least 450,000 heat units before I have a headroom above me to take another 180,000, another 800,000 heat units. So 1,250,000, my max, minus 800,000 equals that 450,000 here. And so I'm gonna have to wait. Whoops, wrong buttons, how embarrassing. I'm gonna to have to wait this time to go from this smiley face to that smiley face. So that's 30 minutes and it likes like 65. I'm just gonna have to wait 35 minutes to cool off after that first 800,000 uh, thermal insult uh, to get ready for another 800,000 thermal insult without overheating. All right. All right, I hope that helps you work these through. Uh, again, I have to uh, give my kudos to uh, my references, which would be uh, Bouchong, Quinn Carroll, and I even stole some images from Johnston and Fauber. So I'd like to thank all those authors. Okay, this is X-Ray Bob. I'm out.